I recently asked all my Instagram followers to send me in some of their bookish confessions and today we are going to go through all of them. So thank you so much to every single person who took the time to send something in because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to make this video. And if in the future you do want to be a part of these type of videos, I do post like little question boxes on my stories randomly when I'm getting ready for a video like this. So if you did want to be a part of these and make sure to follow me on my Instagram, I'll have a link for it down below. Okay, so first up, someone said, I don't think trigger warnings are necessary. They are almost like spoilers. So happens to be, I completely agree with you on that, even though I am someone who does put out trigger warnings like in general for books. I mostly try to tell people just like look up trigger warnings and I'll give basic ones just to give off like, you know, what type of vibe this story actually is. But I do understand how sometimes trigger warnings can be considered a spoiler and therefore it really like crosses the line sometimes when people share certain things. The thing is, is that because I like share all of these books online and like people are coming to me for recommendations, I really like to give the people what they want. And most people do want to see trigger warnings. So that is why I add them in. But I do kind of agree with you when you say like, you know, they could definitely be spoilers. I also not even with just that, but I also do think that they're somewhat, you know, they're not needed. Like if you're reading a book, like, you know, do your due diligence if you have to like, you know, be prepared for something. Like personally, my only more or less trigger warning is that I do not like reading about cheating. So I always do my own due diligence before I go into any book to make sure that it's not going to have a cheating vibe in it. I can always look up for other reviews for it or I can always like, you know, ask people who have read it before if this is something that like, you know, would make me uncomfortable or not. So I do think that trigger warnings in general are something that like the own personal person who has that trigger warning should, you know, be looking out for. It's not someone else's responsibility per se to tell you what the book is actually about and what you should, you know, be expecting from it and everything like that. But it's just like a general common sense these days that like people just share trigger warnings because, you know, there are so many things that people are triggered by. So I get why it's a thing, but also I completely agree with you that it's something that like shouldn't really be a thing per se. Also, before I move on, I'm just saying that a lot of authors these days do put their own trigger warnings at the beginning of their books just to warn people of what they can expect when they actually go into it. And I think that that is okay. Like if the author feels like someone might be like, you know, uncomfortable with certain situations, it's their right to put that at the beginning of their book just to warn them what they're getting into. But I don't think that it's necessarily a reader's, you know, it's not on the reader to tell other readers what is actually going on in the book, trigger warning wise, especially if the author didn't feel like it was necessary to put it at the beginning of the book. So whatever, that's my take on it. I feel like I could sit here and talk about this topic alone for like 10 minutes. So we will move on. Next up, someone said, I sometimes skip chapters written by my least favorite character's perspective. So happens to be, I have done this as well. Specifically, I'm pretty sure I did this in Six of Crows, like the, the Grishaverse of sorts when in like, you know, I, I don't know, one of the books, like I don't think I was really a big fan of like Matthias at one point. Is that his name? I don't even know. I read it like years ago, but I do remember that I felt like doing this in the Six of Crows duology when I read it like way back when. And I also remember that sometimes when I like reread Throne of Glass, I will space out just a little bit on some other like specific people's chapters. Sometimes if I'm not super down to listen to them, especially because I'm doing rereads. So therefore it's like, I already know what's going to happen. And like, I just, I'm not so down to like hang out with them at that moment. So I totally understand where you're coming from in that. I don't do it often, but I understand why people would do that. Even though a lot of people would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I can't remember the last time I read the last sentence of a book. I don't care enough to finish the paragraph. What's funny is that I actually know a lot of people who do this where they just like completely skip epilogues. Like some people, once the couple or whatever happening in the book is all like good and done, they really don't care to see like the after effect and therefore people skip like, you know, the last paragraph, people skip like the epilogue and stuff like that. I totally get it. And happens to be sometimes when I'm not so into a book, I will skim the epilogue. I'll be like, okay, I really don't care. Like it was over. I'm happy I made it to the end. I've had enough sort of thing. But if I really am loving a book, I will read literally until the last word and savor every second of it. I disliked A Court of Silver Flames. So happens to be, I wasn't a huge fan of A Court of Silver Flames either. It was by far my least favorite book in the entire like Akatar world. And sometimes when I'm doing a reread, I even like skip that book. I like it enough to read it like sometimes if I'm like super down to just like continue living in the world, but it is by far not my favorite. And you are not the only person like me and you are not the only person who feel that way. I know a lot of people absolutely love it and it's their favorite from the series, but then just as equally, there are a lot of people 
people who have like I've talked to in the past who feel the same way as you and me do about that book specifically. A lot of people have been saying things like I dog ear pages and I always crack the spine. And what's funny is that I know that there's such a 50 50 divide in the book community of like, oh, you want to keep your books in like pristine edition versus like people really like like beating up their books. And I've been on both sides because right when I started collecting books, I was on the side of like, oh, I want to keep them as perfect as possible. But then over time, I kind of realized that I kind of want my library to feel a little bit used. Like I want someone to be able to walk in and be able to guess which are my favorite books because of how many times they've been opened and how used the book actually looks like. It's just a different vibe and both vibes are okay. But happens to be, even though I used to be on like the keep them perfect vibe, I now am on the like opposite vibe. And I do very often dog ear pages. I don't go out of my way to crack the spine, but if a crack spine, if a, if a spine cracks, I will not like cry over it or anything. Not unheard of, but staying up way too late to read or not working so I can read. So I feel like a lot of people can definitely relate to that and happens to be, I don't necessarily stay up late to like read a book. I do it very unoften. And I can actually remember like every single time I've stayed up late to read a book because it was just that, that good. And I was like, no, 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 I need to finish this book. I am not going to sleep until I know everything I need to know. But happens to be specifically, I have pushed off work so that I can read, especially because I work for myself and therefore I make my own hours. I'm able to accept or decline work or anything like that. And sometimes when I'm in the middle of a really good book or like part in the middle of a really good series, I will like, I'll tell my clients like, oh yeah, I'm busy. Sorry. I'll, I'll get back to you in like two days. I'm working on a really big project. And my big project is really like finishing my book unpopular opinion. I don't like any kind of smut or dirty scenes. And then someone else said spicy scenes are boring to me. So I skip them. So what's funny is that right when I kind of found like spicy books in general, like I used to only read like YA books, didn't really know what else was out there. And then as I slowly found adult books and more spicy books in general, I got really into it. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is so fun. This is so exciting. So new, so different. But over time that slowly like dwindled. And now I'm not really a huge fan of it per se in general. I've always said this, that I'm not really a fan of books that are like heavily on the spice. Like I don't really need to see like a thousand sex scenes, but one or two like lengthy ones real, wouldn't really bother me. But lately I have been feeling like not really caring about those moments anymore, unless there's something like really unique about it or it's really adding to the story. But just having a regular book and then having like three, four, five sex scenes thrown in there just because like they want to make it spicy. I usually end up getting bored and honestly, I will end up skimming them too. I never read the back cover blurb. I love going into books on a good feeling and a prayer. So what's funny is I don't know if I actually actually like told you guys about this, but I feel like I've been having this conversation in my head for a while and I might've mentioned it like here or there, but I miss the days when I used to do that. Right when I got into reading, I would just like see a cover. Someone would say like one or two good things and I would just buy it blind. And not even like just recently when I got into books now, but even as a kid, I'd go to the library and I would just like pick out random books, not really look too much into it or anything like that. And I would just like go on it with a good feeling sort of situation. And those books end up being the most enjoyable because you end up going in blind. You don't really know what you're getting yourself into. And it's just like, it's such a different experience. And I really do miss that. And I don't do it often enough. And I really would like to do it more. So I'm a little bit envious of you that this is like one of your confessions that you do this all the time, because I really would like to be more like you. I feel like this next one does not make so much sense, but someone said, if I'm at a slow part, I 100% skip ahead and then come back to fill in the gaps later. That makes not a lot of sense to me. First of all, I understand the idea of like skimming something. If you're like not really vibing with the moment, you just want to like get what you need and then move on because you know, you don't want to like, you know, not want to continue or anything like that. So you skim it instead. I believe in that. I do that sometimes. Skipping, I don't really 100% understand because like, what if you miss something important? Like how would you ever know if you actually miss something important? Rather skim over skip, but maybe you're just like, you know, using the words interchangeably, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But then why would you actually go back to it later? Like if you're going to skip something, then skip it. Like it's kind of like reading a book out of order. Why would you skip it and be like, oh yeah, I'll just go back later. And then you go back later. And then it's like, you fill in the blanks. It just doesn't really make sense to me. It's like, if you're going to skip it, then like, you know, commit to the skipping, you know? And then someone else said, I'll skim anything that isn't dialogue. So I have heard people do this before and I 100% do not understand it. It's like, have you ever heard that saying like, read between the lines like the most important things are between the actual lines in the moments where people aren't actually saying stuff and I think that if you're only reading the actual dialogue of a book you are missing like the majority of the book it's not all about like the conversations that they're having it's about the things that they're feeling the things that are literally in between the lines so if you're skipping that oh my god I don't even know what to say to you so I actually got a 
lot of responses along the lines of this next thing. So I'll just read you a couple of them. So someone said, I used to read the last chapter first to make sure I liked the ending before I started. Someone else said, sometimes I skipped the last page just to make sure it's an HEA. Another person said like, I read the epilogue first if it's a love triangle so I don't fall in love with the wrong guy. And it happens to be specifically, I completely understand where you're coming from with that because I don't read love triangles often, but every time that I have read a love triangle, it ends up giving me a lot of anxiety because I'm not really sure where it's going, who I should fall in love with. And basically, um, therefore, I totally see where you're coming from, from wanting to know who it, the, the happily ever after actually ends up with so that you can read it with the right mindset. Like, I totally see that. I don't personally like do that for myself because I somewhat want to just like see where it's going and just like enjoy it for whatever it is. But sometimes I do end up being in the right mindset and I'm rooting for the other guy and then it doesn't end up going my way. And then I end up being somewhat disappointed. So if I knew going into the book, like, oh yeah, it's going to somewhat go this way, I can read it in like a different type of mindset. And then maybe I would have enjoyed the books more or something along those lines. So I really do understand where you're coming from, from, you know, like trying to figure out who the end game is before you actually get involved in a love triangle. But anyway, another person did say that they read the last chapter first and they did this for House of Sky and Breath without knowing and freaked out and happens to be, I did the same exact thing. So right when it came out, I was like reading it right away. Right when like everybody was basically coming out being like, oh my God, did you get to the end? Did you get to the end? I have to talk about it with somebody. So I was like way too nervous. I was like, okay, I just need to know where it's going because why are every, why is everyone freaking out? And the book was way too long that I wasn't really enjoying my time with it because I just wanted to know what was going to happen. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to the end and I'm figuring out what happens. And oh my God, did I regret that a little bit because it definitely did change my perspective when I was reading the rest of the book because I personally wasn't a fan of the ending and like where all that's going. That's a whole other topic for a different day. But basically I really wish that I didn't do that for a lot of reasons. But in general, I am someone who is not afraid to go to the end of the book before I actually like finish the entire book just so I can see where it's going to help with my anxiety level. So everybody who has something to say about this, basically I see where you're coming from and I do agree and I do do it sometimes myself as well. My boyfriend asked what I wanted so I ripped out a page of my favorite smut and I gave it to him. Nice. I will buy the audiobook, Kindle version, and physical copies of the same book. So I know a lot of people who do this, and I understand it up to an extent. I feel like for my favorite books, I would do that, like, you know, all around the board. There are actually a couple of books that I love rereading. So I have the physical book and the audiobook. I'm personally not a fan of ebooks, but I feel like if I was a fan of ebooks, I would own all of the books as, like, all copies as well. So I see where you're coming from. I, I hope you don't do it for every single book that you own. Like, if the book absolutely sucks, I hope you don't own three copies of it but for your favorites I do understand why some people do that because I do it myself as well only two of my friends know that I read because I'm afraid that if I tell my other friends they will make fun of me I don't know I'm just afraid of telling them and I shouldn't be and I 100% agree with you when you say that you shouldn't be and I do think that if you can't really share things with your friends then are they even really your friends personally I shouldn't really be able to even talk on this topic because I don't really have a lot of friends I mean I do have some friends but it's mostly like me and my husband we have joint friends because we've been together for so long so any friend that is his is also a friend of mine so we have like a group of friends and I guess they are considered my friends, but whatever. Either way, it's an interesting situation. I don't really have a lot of like girlfriends that like I talk to sort of thing. But my point is, is that they all know of the books that I read. Like they all follow me. They're all aware of it. Like I'm very open with like what I do, obviously, because I have this like, like uh, all these channels and stuff like that. So it's something that I'm comfortable sharing. And I understand why people want to be comfortable sharing. But also like you should be proud of what you're reading. Like even if you're reading like smutty, alien, I don't know what you're reading. But anything that you read, you really shouldn't be like, you know, embarrassed about it because maybe they have that secret too and they're feeling the same way maybe they want to like share it together or I don't really know your situation but I just feel like you know anything that you do in life whether it's reading or any other hobbies that you have you should never like be afraid to share it with people unless like for some reason it's like super embarrassing I don't even know what would be so embarrassing that you wouldn't want to share but reading is not something that you should be embarrassed about and I really hate that whole like mindset of when a lot of people say it's like oh you know they want to share a book like they want to make a book scram but like you know they're a little bit embarrassed or it's like they don't really like want to tell their family of the things that they read or like things along those lines and I get that like everybody's situation is a little bit different and like it's not always that easy or that simple because of like certain people judging you whatever but like specifically with your friends like they're not your friends if you can't really share everything with them you know I don't know whatever I feel like I shouldn't be the one to talk about this because obviously like I don't really know the whole situation but in general don't be embarrassed about what you read because like it's just you know it's what you enjoy doing and you should be proud and confident in whatever it is that you do spend your time on that's all 
All right, and the last one that I'm gonna do is someone said, reviews help me understand my feelings of a book better afterwards. And that is something that I 100% can relate to. I don't know if it's necessarily like a confession, but that is something that I 100% do. And I am not afraid to like share it with the world. Sometimes when I finish a book and I'm not really sure how to articulate my feelings, I'll go and read what other people have to say about it. And often a lot of people, like after reading a handful of reviews, they will mention everything that I was feeling. They'll put into words what I was feeling, but couldn't put into words myself and it really does help me articulate my thoughts as to like why was I feeling this way why did I not enjoy this and then they'll point out why I didn't like why they didn't enjoy it. and I'm like I, I felt the same exact way I just didn't really realize it until you said it so I 100% um, understand this and I also think that it's something that a lot of people should do like once you finish a book a lot of people tell me like oh they don't really know how to like write good reviews they don't really know how to articulate their thoughts it's like go read some other people's reviews see what they had to say and then think about what you felt versus what they felt and then that is how you'll form your thoughts on it. So I totally hear what you're saying and I love doing this myself. Before we go, I actually wanted to share with you a couple of my bookish confessions, even though I didn't really overthink this very much. I like kind of like as I was going through everything that you guys had to say, I came up with a couple myself. So I feel like I want to share some before I let you go because it's only fair. You shared some confessions. I should share some confessions too, even though you guys had like, you know, the, the um, anonymous thing going and I don't, but it's fine. Either way, I've said this multiple times, but um, a Throne of Glass over Akatar. I know that Akatar is like so much more popular, but I'm a much bigger fan of Throne of Glass and I had actually a couple people say how like they don't understand why more people like Actar versus like Throne of Glass and a lot of people will be like oh I absolutely love Actar and they haven't even tried Throne of Glass and that is something that definitely boggles my mind I'm like in my personal opinion I do think that Throne of Glass is like world worlds better and I understand why people get like pulled into Actar and why they end up obsessing over more like I see what they're seeing I just think that like realistically Throne of Glass is like a thousand times better for so many reasons and it really makes me sad that that is not the more popular book I also think it has to do with the fact that it's not really over so therefore it's newer books and it's still coming out so people like you know the hype of newer releases and like you know things that are still ongoing versus like throwing a glass is over with the whole gist I get why it is the way it is my point is is that I am a much bigger fan of throwing a glass over Akhtar and that is that also, I really wish that Akatar wasn't being made into a series. I'm not a huge fan of like things being adapted. I think that often it can be done very well, but more often than not, I'll end up being disappointed for one reason or another because they always have to change something when you're taking something from a book, putting it into film. And that is just like the way about different mediums or medias. I don't know how to say it, but I am just a little bit nervous for the Akatar series like to come out because I just know that there is going to be something that I personally am disappointed in with it. And I just rather it like not be a thing. I just know... The, the series is going to come out. It's going to become so much more popular, even more popular than it already is. And I'm just, I'm not down for the whole hype surrounding it. I just wish that it wasn't going to be a thing. And then it happens to be on top of that while we're on the Sarah J Mass topic, because I feel like it's just something that I'm always talking about with other people. So I have a lot of thoughts on it, but I also am not a fan of the entire like multiverse thing between all of her series. Like I'm not going to say anything like too spoilery, but like there is a whole like, you know, talk about like, you know, all of her series interconnecting and things along those lines. And I'm just not a fan of that. I really, wish that each series just stayed its own and yeah they all have very similar vibes and that's why like if you liked one you're more more likely to like the other yada 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 but I really wish that it was just that like yeah her things are so deep there's so many theories and things that you can like attach to other things and like you know connect the dots sort of stuff but I really wish that that was the end of it like I really wish that they didn't actually connect and like it didn't get more complicated than it has to be because I it's just I don't know it's just not my thing I could talk about this for like literally half an hour straight but I am just not a fan of where she is taking all of her series in general and then on a completely other topic something that I've been wanting to like say for a while I just don't really know how to like completely put it into words so I'm just gonna like say it very quickly and then if you guys want to hear more maybe I'll actually like make a whole video about it I don't know but I um, am not as big of a fan of book talk and bookstagram since joining a book talk and bookstagram I used to think like before I actually made my channel and everything like that that it was like one of the only places on the internet where things were actually like a hundred percent positive and there was no negativity or like things along those lines and it's like you know how every single niche like there's always like trolls there's always negative things going around and stuff along those lines when I wasn't a part of the actual community and I was just like you know looking at it on an outsider's point of view I thought that it was like the best place in the world like I was like oh my god this place is so nice there's so many people who just like reading that's the only reason why they're there and therefore it's such a positive place and then once I got onto the other side of things I realized that that is definitely not the case and I guess it's also like evolved since I actually joined it like more people have been joining it because of COVID and everything along 
along those lines. And it's just gotten bigger and more mainstream and things and like everything like that. And therefore that always brings in a people with like negative thoughts and stuff along those lines. But I feel like it's just, it's changed over time. And I don't necessarily per se love in like some of the directions of where, you know, certain things are going in the sense of like, you know, a lot of people like to hate on other people for like reading what they want to read. And a lot of people are so much more critical about stuff of like, they judge other people for what they're reading and things along those lines. And I feel like right when I started this community, it was so po like only positive. I didn't see a single negative thing. I even specifically remember when I was like starting up all my stuff, I was talking to my husband about it. And I'm like, yeah, I really think it's like one of the only places on the internet that is like a hundred percent a positive place. Never see anything bad or stuff along those lines. Even when people are like sharing their negative thoughts, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like the community in general was always such a positive place. And then since joining it as it has become such a more negative place. And I feel like that that's not only, you know, there's so many aspects to it. And that's why I'm like, I feel like I can talk about it for a long time. But basically it's just like a thought that I had that like, I don't feel like I love the entire book community as much as I did as to when I was only a viewer. But I feel like that's that that tends to happen with anything that you join. Like once you get onto the other side of things, things are always going to change. So that's fine. But it's, I don't know, it's just something random that I wanted to share and my thoughts aren't fully formed on it. So if you want to continue the discussion, you know, down in the comment section below, I feel like we can like keep talking about there. But either way, I'll leave it at that. And with that said, I'm going to just say goodbye to you guys. So I hope that, um, you know, you enjoyed hearing other people's bookish confessions. I hope you enjoyed hearing my bookish confessions. If you have any bookish confessions you'd like to, you know, share with the group, you can feel fear to do it down below and maybe I'll, um, you know, answer it and like, you know, say my, my thoughts on it. But anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel if you're not currently subscribed because I would really appreciate it. But either way, I just appreciate you watching my video. So thank you so much for being here and until next time, enjoy reading. Thank you.